Surveying the friendships of my late father, Mr. Song Shun Ren, 60 years ago, it is naturally difficult for me to grasp the full picture, being so much younger. If I try to recall my father's conversations and examine his writings, perhaps it is possible to piece together an outline of his friendships and gain some insights here and there. In my childhood, whenever my father talked about upright and principled conduct, he liked to cite as prime examples our eminent ancestors throughout the ages, their virtuous friends and his esteemed companions. The distinguished name of Uncle Pu Ru, Ho Xing Ru, was frequently mentioned in this context. As I began to broaden my understanding of the world, I gradually realized that virtuous character and moral conduct are qualities that inspire and encourage people. As an adult, having experienced the trials of the world, the passing of too many years, I deeply regret that those who appreciate and enjoy Uncle Pu's calligraphy and paintings do not necessarily know of his integrity and noble character. At one time, my father wrote an article, the former Prince Puru, which gave a detailed account of Uncle Puru's moral character and artistic accomplishments. This article was published in the second issue of Daren magazine on 15th June in the 59th year of the Republic of China, 1970. By then, Uncle Pu had already passed away for seven years. One month earlier, on 15th May, Daren magazine had just launched its inaugural issue in Hong Kong. Edited by Uncle Sun Wei Chang, Daren magazine covered a wide range of historical and literary topics. My father would occasionally contribute articles. He became an addition to its prestigious stable of writers. In January of the 63rd year of the Republic, 1974, on the 10th death anniversary of Uncle Pu Ru, Long Tao Publishing Company in Taipei published an anthology titled Eminent Contemporary Writers Reminisce, The Former Prince Pu Ru. It included my father's article, The Former Prince Pu Ru, the title my father used was appropriated and became the title of this anthology. His calligraphy in running script was the six characters of Zhou Wang Sun Pu Xing Yu, the former Prince Pu Xing Yu, were also appropriated and printed on the front cover. The articles in this book are by an assortment of eminent writers from Hong Kong and Taiwan, such as Ye Gong Chao, 1904 to 1981, Ling Xi, Nong De Plume of Gao Guo Yu, 1906 to 1992, Zhang Muhan, 1902 to 1980, Wang Zhongwei, 1909 to 1998, Li Yu. 1915 to 1997, Zhu Shenzai, 
Nom de Plume of Zhu Pu, 1902-1970, Zhou Qizi, Nom de Plume of Zhou Shifan, 1912-1984, and others. This is the only book of remembrance published on the 10th death anniversary of Uncle Pu. Another 49 years passed by in December of the 112th year of the Republic, 2023, on the 60th death anniversary of Uncle Pulu, the Chinese Heritage Virtual Museum republished my father's article, The Former Prince Pulu, accompanied by an English translation, hoping that the rectitude, writings and arts of Uncle Pulu can be inspirational to Chinese and steadily appreciated by foreigners. Indeed, the seeds of Chinese classical culture can be sowed beyond our national boundaries in this time of cultural demise. The article, The Former Prince Puru, provides a detailed account of the story of the Zhe Gu Tian lyric painting. As a child, I saw this painting displayed in our old home emanating tranquility, emptiness, dejection, and sorrow. Reading this article again, the feeling of melancholy only soars. Some of the passages are. Themes of sorrowful life often appear in his writings, such as when he first came to Hong Kong. One autumn night, he boarded a boat for pleasure and composed a Zi lyric to the tune Zhe Gu Tian. It reads, Snowdrops falling on rushes have startled the white gulls, and the clear waters mirror a day called sand. The perfumed grass is blue, limitless, immense. A wanderer is stranded south of the river, and autumn prevails everywhere. There are only the moon in the sky, the house on the bank, a light cloud, some cool dews, and curtain hooks. In the misty void, no sign of my country dear, but should it appear, how much sadder indeed. The above tzu was translated by Uncle T.C. Lai, a friend of Mr. So Shunbe. The last two lines, indeed, speak of something directly comprehensible, but also suggest a more profound interpretation. They contain so much lamentable reflections. Moreover, this Tzu lyric is far away in spirit and ethereally beautiful, as if a painting is incorporated within the Tzu lyric. I had a sudden idea and at once begged Mr. Pu to paint this Tzu lyric into a picture, turning it into a true masterpiece under heaven. Mr. Pu agreed and said that he would slowly complete it after his arrival in Taiwan. For this kind of dedicated and meticulous work, it had to be crafted in the manner earlier described in this essay, full concentration. It was not something that could be hastily executed under the window of a hotel room or amidst the hustle and bustle of a crowd of guests. Sure enough, when he returned to Hong Kong the following year in autumn, he gave me the painting in person. Such was my astonishment and delight as I held and looked at it. A sense of spaciousness and subdued charm filled the entire scene, overwhelming the viewer. The pale reds and light greens were serene and elegant to their utmost, while the artistic conception and composition were transcendentally pure and unworldly. With this kind of brushwork, even Wen Zhenming, 1470-1559, and Tang Ying, 1470-1524, would be humbled if they were resurrected. 
let alone all the other contemporary artists. In addition to inscribing the Ci lyric to the tune Zhe Hu Tian, as aforementioned, he also added a colophon. The words are as follows. I am not skilled in Ci lyric. By chance, I composed to the tune Zhe Hu Tian. When my Ci brother Xin Ren saw it, he deemed it worthy of preservation and bid me to create a painting. Although I understand the rudiments of painting, it has very little aura of Ci lyric. It is done impetuously and only manages to convey a fraction of the aura of Ci lyric. When Xin Ren sees this, I hope he will not think this superficial and hollow. Written in the tenth month of Ren Yin year, 1962, by the recluse of the Western Hills, Puru. That evening, I clutched this painting at a dinner gathering of Hong Kong's literati and artists in honour of Mr. Fu at the North China Restaurant. Many friends at the banquet admired the painting endlessly and unanimously agreed that it was indeed an exquisite masterpiece by Mr. Fu in recent years. I was so pleased that I made New Year greeting cards with the image of this painting and sent them to friends. As I was moved by the lines in his Ci lyric to the tune Zhe Hu Tian. In the misty void, no sign of my country dear, but should it appear, how much sadder indeed. I was reminded of someone who claimed to surpass Li Siming, Taizong Emperor of Tang Dynasty and Zhou Huangying, Taizu Emperor of Song Dynasty, but resulting in such a scale of sufferings and death across the country, even ghosts wail and deities cry. Mr. Pu was a cultivated gentleman. He expressed his sentiments with sighs and laments. For me, on the other hand, I am an impassioned man, drawing my sword and bow and smashing the spitting. I also composed a Ci lyric to the tune Mo Yu Er. It was printed on the back of the greeting card. It reads, How bright the moon shines on the little rowing skiff. A light gull rises startled from the misty islet. In the vague void, no trace of mountain or river but a deep sorrow etched in the mist. The singing and the dancing, the dazzling spectacles on the towers and terraces. They are fair, but they are not those of our homeland. The river is damned, the dream interrupted. Memories of the tavans of olden days, deep in spring, painted beams where swallows age gazing till the ice break down the road that leads to the old garden. Affairs of a thousand years, vain to speak of the great emperors of the Tang and Song dynasties. Grandiloquent poesy is empty when set beside events, past and present. Starving swans circle the land, weeping for those who toil and suffer confinement. Ghosts cry out, men rage. You need not bemoan, I will never believe that our sacred land will remain forever in this wretched plight. Even now, at the waning hour of twilight, there may still be a new move on the board. We may still see cloud dragons assemble soldiers and horses,
cross from heaven. The above tzu was translated by Professor John Minford. After printing the greeting cards, Mr. Puru happened to be still in Hong Kong. He was thrilled to see them and took more than a dozen cards. Now, a number of years have gone by since Mr. Pu passed away. The rivers and mountains have remained unchanged, but there is no sign of our soldiers and horses. The will of heaven, the affairs of men, what can one do but sigh? In his later years, Uncle Puru visited Hong Kong three times to give lectures, hold exhibitions, enjoy crab feasts, and meet friends. In November of the 47th year of the Republic, 1958, he traveled from Taiwan through Hong Kong to Thailand for an exhibition of his calligraphy and paintings in Bangkok, with only a brief stopover in Hong Kong. His first proper visit to Hong Kong began on 15th December in the 47th year of the Republic, 1958, when he arrived from Thailand, departing on 11th January the following year for Taiwan. His second visit to Hong Kong was in the 50th year of the Republic, 1961, arriving on 23rd October from Taiwan, returning on 27th December. His third visit to Hong Kong was in the 51st year of the Republic, 1962. He arrived in October and returned in December, a leisure trip to visit friends. However, the exact dates of his arrival and departure are difficult to establish. So which year was the Tzu lyric to the tune Tzu Gu Tian written? The article the former Prince Puru says, such as when he first came to Hong Kong, one autumn night, he boarded a boat for pleasure and composed the Tzu lyric to the tune Tzu Hu Tian. Based on the dates of Uncle Pu's three visits to Hong Kong, the Tzu lyric to the tune Tzu Hu Tian should be composed between December of the 47th year of the Republic, 1958, to January of the 48th year of the Republic, 1959. Hong Kong is only a stone's throw away from mainland China. Writing in such proximity makes the words of the Tzu ever more melancholic. To the tune Tzu Gu Tian above has an earlier version before revision. It was included in the second volume titled Ying Bi Yu Ying Tzu of the Poems, Tzu and Couplets of Han Yutong, published by Ya Yutong of Taipei in December of the 62nd year of the Republic, 1973. In this version, seven of the characters differ, although the meaning remains more or less the same. At 3 p.m. on 22nd December in the 47th year of the Republic, 1958, Uncle Puru, at the invitation of the University of Hong Kong, delivered a lecture titled Chinese Literature calligraphy and painting at the Chemistry Building Auditorium. From 27th December to 29th December, over a period of three days, Uncle Puru held an art exhibition at Li Baochun Building on Dever Road Central in Hong Kong Island, a new building completed only a year before. The exhibition showcased over 90 artworks of landscape, figures and calligraphy creating a cultural sensation in Hong Kong and drawing several thousand visitors. 
it was attended by many members of the literary and artistic circles, such as Zhuo Xunsen, 1893 to 1969, Wang Sizhao, 1905 to 1984, Lin Qianshi, 1918 to 1990, Xiong Siyi, 1902 to 1992, and Zhen Houxi, 1916 to 1999. There were many enthusiastic purchases at the exhibition opening, and my father had to make a request for the future delivery of the painting titled Goddess of Lord River after it was sold a few times over. In addition, he kept a photograph taken on the opening day with Uncle Pu as a cherished memento. On 2nd January the following year, Uncle Puru delivered a lecture at New Asia College titled Calligraphy and Painting with Professor Chen Wu, 1895 to 1990, presiding over the event. At 5 p.m. on 3rd January, in response to a second invitation from the University of Hong Kong, Uncle Pu delivered a lecture at the Chemistry Building Auditorium titled on the common origin of calligraphy and painting. Recently, after researching old newspapers in Hong Kong, the full texts of the three lectures, Chinese literature, calligraphy and painting, calligraphy and painting, on the common origin of calligraphy and painting, were unbelievably discovered. The texts of the speeches made by Uncle Puru over 60 years ago, have been unexpectedly preserved in this world. In a state of euphoria, I respectfully proofread the texts taken from the newspapers, with the intention of publishing them in succession at the Chinese Heritage Virtual Museum. I reckon our fellow enthusiasts will likewise be ecstatic. In late October of the 50th year of the Republic, 1961, Uncle Puru delivered another lecture in response to a second invitation from the art department of the New Asia College. In addition, he personally demonstrated painting techniques to students every Saturday afternoon. From 10 to 12 December, he held an art exhibition at the Hall of the China Cultural Association of Haifeng Road in Kowloon, showing more than 90 pieces of calligraphy and paintings. The exhibition then relocated to the YMCA building on Daver Road, central in Hong Kong Island, from 13th to 15th December, drawing several thousand visitors. It was attended by many from the literary and artistic circles, including Qian Mu, 1895 to 1990, Zheng Ke Duan, 1900 to 1975, Yao Ke, 1905 to 1991, Wu Jun Sen, 1901 to 2000, Gao Lingmei, Zhou Sixing, 1923 to 2021, Jia Nerfu, 1910 to 1999, Zhou Qianchou, 1910 to 2006, Tu Gong Sui, 1905 to 1991. Fei Zibing, 1890 to 1981, Wang Zibo, 1925 to 1964, and others. During Uncle Puru's second visit to Hong Kong in the 50th year of the Republic, 1961, my father beseeched him to make the Zhe Gu Tian lyric painting. As noted in the article, The Former Prince Puru, sure enough, when he returned to Hong Kong the following year in autumn, he gave me the painting in person. The Zhe Gu Tian lyric painting was inscribed with these words, written in the tenth month of Ren Ying year by the recluse of the Western Hills, Pu Ru. Ren Ying year is 1962, the 51st year of the Republic. Thus, it can be confirmed that my father met up with Uncle Pu the year before in Hong Kong and asked for this painting. 
My father kept a letter from Uncle Zhu Lu. It reads, Dear Xinlen, your communication was courteously received. Earlier, I was getting ready to leave. I dared not delay my original promise, so the painting was executed in haste. Due to my lack of concentration, there were many mistakes. Your request for my painting is a testament to your devotion to art. It should really be sent to you immediately. But with the new year approaching and an infinitude of matters at hand, I prefer to wait for a more leisurely moment to paint the work for you. Nonetheless, I dare not delay this for too long. Recently, I took a trip to Fonghuang Pavilion in the mountains. I wrote this letter in haste, wishing you both peace and well-being. Respectfully, Pu Yu. Xin Ren, meaning heart sick, was the nom de plume adopted by my father after abandoning his earlier pen name, Nü Li, following the fall of mainland China. The first part of the letter referred to the painting Goddess of Low River that my late father commissioned in the 47th year of the Republic, 1958. It was personally handed over to him during Uncle Pu Ru's second visit to Hong Kong in the 50th year of the Republic, 1961. The second part of the letter suggested that Uncle Pu would paint the Zirgu Tian lyric painting when he had time. The final part of the letter mentioned a recent trip to Fonghuang Pavilion in the mountains. Fonghuang Pavilion is a hot spring hotel in Beitou, Taipei, frequented by Uncle Pu. In the 47th year of the Republic, 1958, Uncle Pu made a painting titled Autumn Scenery of Fonghuang Pavilion. And in the following year, he composed a poem titled Fonghuang Pavilion. The poem was included in the poems, ci, and couplets of Han Yutong. One could deduce that the letter was written in January of the 51st year of the Republic, 1962, shortly before the Chinese New Year. The article, The Former Prince Pu Lu, further describes the scene whereby Uncle Pu handed over the Zhe Gu Tian lyric painting in the winter of the 51st year of the Republic, 1962. It says, That evening, I clutched this painting at a dinner gathering of Hong Kong's literati and artists in honor of Mr. Pu at the North China restaurant. Many friends at the banquet admired the painting endlessly and unanimously agreed that it was indeed an exquisite masterpiece by Mr. Pu in recent years. In the 46th year of the Republic, 1957, the North China Restaurant opened its doors at 7A Hart Avenue in Jim Sa Zhui, Hong Kong. It became a prominent restaurant serving food from Peking. The entrance was decorated with a horizontal calligraphic plaque by Uncle Zhang Da Qian, 1899 to 1983, a prominent artist. When the literati of Hong Kong entertained Uncle Pu at the North China restaurant in the 51st year of the Republic, 1962, the food probably provided some solace for his homesickness. In the winter of the 51st year of the Republic, 1962, my father composed a Zi lyric to the tune Mo Yu Er in response to Uncle Pu's lyric to the tune Zhe Gu Tian. He then printed the Zhe Gu Tian lyric painting and the lyric to the tune Mo Yu Er on the front and back of a greeting card design, presenting an unprecedented level of literary refinement for the genre of greeting cards. A short preface is attached to the lyric Mo Yu Er. The preface had been translated by Professor John Winford. 
He reads, Mr. Pu Xingyu came on a short visit to Hong Kong. He showed me a lyric he had written to the tune Zhe Hu Tian, which included the lines, In the vague void, no trace of mountain or river. But if the moon did shine on mountain and river, then that sight would be sadder still. He subsequently presented me with one of his own paintings done in the detailed and delicate Gong Hui style. I expanded the inner meaning of these lines of his in a lyric of my own. At this time, China mainland was for most a living hell, while some were busy writing in a distorted way, speaking ill of the ancient emperors of the Tang and Song dynasties, simply as a way of boosting their own fame. This is a reference to lines in a famous or infamous lyric written by Mao Zedong in 1936, Snow, to the tune Xing Yuan Chun. The first emperors of the Tang and Song dynasties had little poetry in them. What a ridiculous spectacle that was. In the 63rd year of the Republic, 1974, the well-known author and translator from Hong Kong, Uncle Lai Tian Chang, 1921 to 2022, compiled a book titled Chinese Painting, Its Mystic Essence. He borrowed and photographed the Zhe Hu Tian lyric painting from my father for his book. He also made an English translation of Uncle Tu Ru's Zi lyric to the tune Zhe Hu Tian. He wrote a dedication on the title page of the book with these words, for the rectification of my elder brother Xun Ren, a gift from the younger brother Tian Chang. 74, 10, 9. In another 29 years, in August of the 92nd year of the Republic, in 2003, I invited the renowned Sinologist, Professor John Minford, to translate my father's Zi anthology, The Fragrant Hermitage, becoming an early example of English translation of a full volume of Zi lyrics. Professor Minford wielded his erudite pen, dipped into the inkwell of the spirit of Zi lyric, crossed the cultural barriers of East and West, and forged a remarkable poetic spectacle. In the 94th year of the Republic, 2005, the Chinese-English bilingual edition of the Fragrant Hermitage was published accompanied by two CDs featuring the recorded recitation by my father. After nearly 1,000 years, the refined sounds of the Zi poet can finally be heard in the world. Uncle Puru's peers, of course, admired his art, 
writings and comportment. Those who were his seniors also held him in high esteem. An example is Zhu Ruzhen, 1870 to 1942, a loyalist or Yi Ming of the Qing dynasty. His letter to Tang Enzhu, 1881 to 1961, says, Recently, I received from Peng Shoukang a painting by Fu Xingyu. Apparently, it was sent by four separate post offices to avoid the risk of loss. It is exquisite. The more he emulates the ancients, the more sublime his work becomes. His work has reached the artistic realm of Li So Dong, 675 to 758 AD. The details of the buildings are exceptionally intricate, but the tip of his brushwork emancipates the ambience of antiquity without any of the common touches found in the works by artisans. This is what makes it so remarkable. My cultivated friend, what do you think? to Tian Ru Anpu, my fellow public examination candidate. Homage from your younger brother, Ru Zhen, on the 19th day of Jiaping month. Jiaping is the 12th month of the lunar calendar. The postmark on the envelope is dated 16th December 1940. The admiration professed by Zhu Ru Zhen is most genuine. Zhu Ru Zhen, 1870 to 1943. Hao, Bing San, Ai Yuan, Zi Yu Tang native of Qingyuan, Guangdong province. In the 29th year of the Guangxu reign, 1903, he attained the Zhiren degree. In the 30th year of the Guangxu reign, 1904, he took part in the Special Irregular Metropolitan Examination and came second, known as Bang Ye, and attained the Jingsi degree. He was appointed junior compiler of the Hanning Academy. In the 32nd year of the Guangxu reign, 1906, he was dispatched to study law at Hosai University in Tokyo, Japan. Upon returning to China, he became a professor at the law department of the Imperial University of Peking. At the same time, he worked on legal amendments and contributed to the establishment of commercial law. He held numerous positions including chief proofreader and editor at the True Records Institute, assistant editor and editor at the Historiography Institute, Hall of Military Glory, Handling Academy, the Law Institute, and the chief editor of the History of Qingyuan County. Later, he took a teaching position at the University of Hong Kong, served as president of the Hong Kong Qingyuan Association, and became Dean of the Hong Kong Confucian Academy. He also traveled to Southeast Asia to promote Confucian teachings. His works include a compendium of the Hanning Academy, Zilin Qi Yue, a rhythmic compilation of surnames in the Hanning Academy, Zilin Xing Si Yun Pian, a record of imperial ammunitions, Ben Ji Sen Xun, and Comparative Study of Chinese and Foreign Criminal Laws, Zhong Wai Xing Fa Bi Zhong. In the 38th year of the Republic, 1949, as mainland China fell to the communists, Uncle Pu Ru arrived in Taiwan. He wrote a letter to President Chiang Kai-shek, elucidating the Chinese communists' attempt to lure him to capitulate and his own resolve. However, the courier of the letter died in a car accident before its delivery. 
After a tortuous journey, the letter eventually ended up in the collection of the National Museum of History. The letter reads, To the esteemed President Kai Shen, respected recipient, when I was previously living in Hangzhou, I received your kind words of concern and I am most grateful. Since taking refuge in Shanghai, I have barely managed to sustain myself by selling paintings. After receiving a telegram from the fraudster government in Beiping, Peking, that asked me to return to Beiping, Peking, and to join the political advisory body of the fraudster government. I made up some story and declined their offer. However, they followed up with a public announcement appointing me to a ministerial position. The night I heard this news, I secretly crossed the Wusong River in a small fishing boat to Dinghai. Now I have arrived in Taiwan. However, I was unable to bring any luggage nor money. My financial situation is now worse than in Shanghai. Although I am impoverished, I find solace in upholding righteousness. Previously, I had tried to persuade the Manchu people in Beiping to conduct themselves according to moral principles, that they should not attend any meetings organized by the fraudster government. Therefore, fortunately, there are no Manchu representatives among the minority ethnic clans in the fraudster political advisory body. Now, the people in the occupied areas are looking to the government to save them from their predicament, hoping the president will make exceptional efforts to appoint capable individuals, eradicate corrupt practices, improve the treatment of soldiers, implement cooperation between the military and civilians. The recovery of the lost territories will be as easy as the turning of the hand. I am deeply indebted to the President's empathy and recognition, thus daring to express my thoughts so frankly. I aspire to retain my untainted integrity, to uphold righteousness that pervades heaven and earth. In my state of dire poverty, I yearn to continue the will of a Confucian. With the utmost sincerity, I await the President's consideration in reverence, respectfully submitted by Puru. Uncle Puru motivated himself according to the principles of moral conduct. For my father, his contemporaries, those southbound men and women, was it not the same? In the midst of a disintegrating world, their rectitude held high the infinite sky. Some applied their thoughts to Tzu lyrics, leaving behind works such as To the Tune Zhe Gu Tian and To the Tune Mo Yu Er. A sexagenarian cycle of 60 years afterwards, Uncle Pu, my father, his contemporaries, and those southbound men and women have all passed away. Perusing the mountains and rivers, there's nothing else but regret and sorrow. <laughs>